afternoon. I'm Lynn and welcome to another day at Utopia Farms. So me and Benny are off to the fields to see what Arnie's up to. He's supposed to be bailing hay today, right Benny? Benny's feeling a little shy, but he hopped in the car, didn't you? But now you're feeling rather bashful. He's still not sure about the car, but he did hop in on his own, so we're off. I thought we'd show you the drive from our house to the field he's working on right now. First we have to get by all this debris in the yard. like a drive in Scotland or Ireland or those countries where you have mountains everywhere but this is Eastern Ontario typical of what the countryside looks like here these beans on the right hand side those are our beans that land's not ours we're renting that land and then coming up on the left here there's another bean field don't know if that's apparent on the camera that's uh, also some land that we're renting and we have a whole bunch of beans on there in one of those and because we have that we're able to dry um, bale wet hay if we had to rely on dry hay this year yeah it would be tough one thing Canada is famous for is potholes and this road has lots of them session over. And here we are. 
out. So this is the hay. You can see it's um, not as thick as it is for the first and second cut, but there's still an awful lot here, I'd say. And you can see it's still quite wet. It's probably wetter than what it was when we baled the first and second cut as well. But it's harder to dry hay this time of year because the warm temperatures are only there for the afternoon basically. In the morning you saw how foggy it was and then the nights are drawing in now. Um, it's getting dark much earlier. So your window for drying is a lot smaller, but I think it's gonna be perfect. And you can see there's quite a lot of bales here. If that wrap holds good for us this year, we're going to have some nice feed for the sheep, which will also mean that we won't have to feed quite so much grain. We would rather feed less grain, and it's not because of the expense, because we do grow it ourselves, but um, we would just prefer to feed more hay, as hay is more the natural diet of sheep. But if you don't have good quality hay, and you want your sheep to stay in good condition, you really need to supplement with grain. But if you have beautiful hay, you shouldn't need any supplementation at all, except around the lambing time. I'm not quite sure why he did that little turnaround there. And he's coming back at it. I'm wondering if the hay is really heavy or something. Or if there's some kind of problem with the tractor. But he'll let us know in a minute. It's 21 degrees and no humidity today. And to me, that is the most perfect of weather you could possibly ask for. Another bale is born. Don't jump. Where? Right there, that yellow sign there? Yeah. It's in front of that, two pucks there, from the other side. They, they have the whole area. Well, they're territorial, but I guess Ben shouldn't be there then. No, Ben wouldn't buy. <sighs> but they'd probably run away if they saw Ben. After a month home for the air conditioning, I think they get a fix. Oh, yeah. But it's yeah. way colder here than in that cap. Yeah, I was just saying that Why? you couldn't get a more beautiful day, but I forgot. Oh. they. Or any air conditioning, I don't know if you remember, but it broke down on his tractor like a month ago? Yeah, all a month ago. And they still haven't fixed it. it it's worse than working with the government. Are you going to push those out of the chair? They're heavy. 
It's gonna keep you in shape, Arnie. You should start jogging around the countryside like the Kiwi guy and Cammy and and Carol hey. De Devaney. <laughs> hey, Car Cammy and the Kiwi guy. I got a thousand bales piled up there. And Carol. Cammy and the Kiwi, <laughs> Kiwi guy, whatever, and Carol, or whatever. If they want to push out a thousand bales, they wouldn't be doing any jogging. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's right. That's what's keeping you buff, Arnie. A thousand bales. Buff. After me complaining buff. about TMR systems, maybe I should have got one. <laughs> well, we had one. You sold it. Oh, that, yeah, that wouldn't have worked. It was a stationary one. You would have had to bring the feed from there to a trough. Yeah, but you had a you had a cart too, Arnie. Yeah. There he is, right there. Where? Right, that bale there towards the green sign. You can see him moving there. See you can walk up there. I'll see if I can see him. Two of them sitting there. See him there? Right in front of that bale. The little dark spot moving. See the green sign? There's a bale there towards the left. He's right there. I'm, I can see him moving from here. I'm looking there. 2020. Maybe, 2020. Maybe the uh, camera will pick it 2020. up. 2020. Arnie, you're not, you, you just blocked it. You didn't focus in. I'll go back a little ways and see if I can see him. So Arnie's going to practice what it's like to roll these bales in the feeder because these are wetter like I said earlier than we normally bale them so if they're wetter they're heavier and if they freeze a bit then they turn into a little bit of uh, an ice cube and then they're even heavier yet again hey the cami got what's cam that the is hey cami the kiwi guy yeah and who's the other guy carol push out a thousand wet bales and then, and then shear our suffix. Don't shear those little ones that weigh 120 <laughs> pounds, 260 pound suffix, and you're going to end up like that. Like you? That's right, like that, <laughs> right there. How tall is the hay, Lynn? I'm two and a half feet. What? Two and a half feet. No, Lynn, come on. Get your math correct. It's about 20 inches. Ben, go on. And, and and what cuts this? Third cut. Third cut. And what is it? Uh, what's the mixture? 70-30 apparently. 70% grasses? No, 70% alfalfa. No, 70% grasses, 30% alfalfa. Yeah, but that's wrong. This is, you can't even see the grasses. Well, what, what happens is, Lynn, with third cut, the alfalfa that's there will start to dominate the field and it will depress the grass. But the grass is there. It's, it's there, but it's definitely more than 30 Oh, look. I think the dog likes the shade. That's right. It's a shade crop. It's a good crop, is it, this year? Good crop, babe? Yes. That alfalfa field makes you stand right out. Actually, it's not fully in flower, eh? No, but they said, they said it only had to be in flower for one crop a year, and the second cut was all in flower. It was in flower at the front of the field, but uh, the back of the field here, I see it's not in flower. It's funny, eh? Well, it's, uh, it's actually quite lush right now. But look at how deep it is. Yeah. It's about 20 inches. It's probably two feet, maybe. 20 inches, two feet. Well, look at where it is on my leg. Yeah. Well, you go home and measure your leg, Len. And you're kind of short, so I don't know where you're getting the four feet from. I didn't say four feet, but look. That's pretty tall. Right I there. See? I'm thinking, I don't know. Well, that's a short leg. That's a leg that's the bum knee, isn't it? That would make it bigger because it's swollen. Okay, before I leave this field, we're going to drive back there and see if we can see those coyotes. If you walk up on them, they're going to run away. But for some reason, they don't seem to mind vehicles. They're used to tractors and stuff driving by them. So if we're lucky, we might get to see them. Okay, I'm still quite away from them, but I do see them. Uh, if I can catch it in the camera. There's one in the field and there's one by the side of the field. I saw them with my eyes and now I can't find them, but we'll move up closer.
And look, he got one. And this is why we want the coyotes around. You guys all saw the rat issue we had this winter? That's what coyotes are surviving on. They're surviving on all the little rodents. And without these guys, we'd have an epidemic everywhere. And I think most people would rather have coyotes than rats. Like I say, we went to a sheep meeting once. It was about coyotes. It was all the local sheep breeders in Eastern Ontario. There's about 50 sheep farmers there. And during the talk, they did a survey because everyone was complaining about all the problems they were having with coyotes. And they did a survey, an anonymous one, and they asked how many losses farmers have had in the last five years, 10 years, and 20 years. And I think only one farmer had a loss. Most losses are due to the fact that people don't have good fencing around their sheep farm or from lambing in the field, especially at night because obviously if there's afterbirth and baby lambs around, it's gonna call in predators. That's why we don't lamb outdoors because somehow we have to find a way to live with these guys. I don't think the solution is to eradicate a species. I think you gotta learn how to work with them. And they're not like the dogs in the UK, the pets that people run through livestock farms that go around and maul all the sheep. A coyote eats what it needs. We don't want them to eat our sheep. That's why we take precautions that that doesn't happen. But uh, there are far worse things, is my point. They know I'm watching them now, and they, I'm guessing they can even hear me talking. So they've gone farther off into the alfalfa field. But you can see that one there with his head down. He's uh, still searching for mice and stuff in there. I think they're beautiful animals. But anyway, oh, maybe we'll see him hunt a bit there. Arnie was haying one year, and as he was looking at the coyotes like this, like it came, they came out of the bush while he started. Oops, we'll just watch him hunt in slow motion there for a sec. Haying, oh, you can see this guy. When they find a mice, they pounce up in the air and jump down on it. So maybe he's gotten another one there. But um, as he was watching the coyote like this, a mother deer and her fawn came out of the bush too. And Arnie was haying for about four hours in the field and all of them were out there side by side. The fawn and the deer were grazing 
and the coyotes were doing this, catching the mice. So as we head home, I guess we can remember that there is a solution to every problem. And the solution doesn't have to be a violent one. Often the simplest solutions will solve a problem. And there's no reason that farmers and nature can't work alongside each other. One shouldn't have to destroy the other. So I was planning on doing basically a video about haying, but it turned into a video about our resident coyotes. So I know I enjoyed that because that's really right up my alley. And I hope you did too. And if you did, give us a like and be sure to join us again tomorrow for the next episode at Utopia Farms. Say bye, Ben. Bye-bye. See you next time.